Good morning, good afternoon, good evening folks wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the third and final part of this monumental swing jaw welding project. Um, this video has the final strengthening plates being put in. It has the heat treatment of the weld area and then it has machining in our machine shop with our huge vertical or horizontal bore. It has the large bearing housings being machined and the large sleeves being machined on uh, vertical bores. And finally we have assembly back in the fitting shop and then we have a, a pretty cool site visit where we actually get to see the crusher doing its thing and smashing some rocks. So thanks to everybody that stuck with me for the first two parts. The response has been fantastic. I'm over the moon. Uh, some of your replies and comments are just brilliant to read. Um, some great stories and uh, feedback. So big thanks for that. This video is a pretty special one for me. Just so happens that this is my 500th video on YouTube. So yeah, can't believe it. I've been on for a long time. I never pushed the whole YouTube thing. I just done it for fun when I was younger to share hobbies and things whenever forums used to be a big deal. And uh, now YouTube is almost becoming my social media platform. Uh, the interaction with you guys that follow me and uh, other YouTubers is off the charts. Uh, there's almost a little family of YouTubers uh, forming. Uh, all the big names, it's it's good to be chatting with them, following what they're doing and interacting. Some of the big names everybody knows, particularly in the welding front, is uh, Jody Welding Tips and Tricks. The stuff he does is amazing. You watch his welding shots and instructional vi and videos, unbelievable. Uh, Curtis, the mighty cutting edge engineering down under, check them out. They are killing it on YouTube at the minute. Uh, Curtis and his wife, her production and the way she's pushing everything, unbelievable. Um, as I said, the new kid on the block, uh, Baz Welder Faber over here in the UK. Uh, he's definitely going to be the one to watch in the UK. Very busy, large plant yard, keeping everything running. Uh, big shout out to Hunter's Plant Weld, Rido Mobile Welding. Of course, I see Weld on YouTube as well. Snowball Engineering, another one doing great things on the machining side of things in the UK, up and coming. Rose Ironworks, thanks for the support, guys. And uh, a special shout out to James at Onward Engineering Solutions. Uh, very kindly helped me out with uh, a job there a while back. If you need uh, on site line boring specialist engineering solutions in the UK, check out uh, Onward Engineering Solutions. He's got a page on Facebook. So yeah guys, uh, brilliant little community going on at the minute. Great interaction and uh, great chat back and forth. Uh, a bit of fun, a bit of banter too and uh, glad to be a part of it. So yeah, sorry for the long winded intro guys. Just wanted to mark my 500th video. So yeah, Without further ado, pull up a chair, crack open a cold one, and uh, enjoy the video. Thanks for the support, guys. So, the next step, fit these plates down in the hole. There's going to be a full layer on that level, which is about midway, if not slightly closer to the back, and then the top face.
prep and ready to set down in the hole. Hopefully they'll fit without too much trimming. Tack them in. And then in a few days we'll them up. A lot of metal to preheat. Lots of welding there. Clean out the little bits of dust and dirt. That's it, ready to weld. So that's the first layer of plates, which are sitting about the middle, and then we'll put a lid on the whole lot. That was a proper stress or sweat fest, but got them all in. So thank goodness, I'd send four pockets with the midway plates. 
all welded in. Absolutely brittle job. Down with the lurk. And there's a heat wave here at the moment. So, I'm not gonna lie. This week was definitely uh, definitely a trial. But I bloody will beat them. They're in there. And it's Friday. And I ain't going home to chill out for the weekend. I'll try and recover a bit. But uh, we'll just have a quick look. The top plates have arrived. So we'll go and get them and set them and see what has to be done for the prep on those. So I've got our four nice heavy finger nipping plates and uh, just have to do a bit of fettling to get them fitted. So I'm going to put a full pen prep in the full circumference of all four of these plates. So they have a flush finish. So I have to mark them all up with chalk. It's a big enough prep to be able to reach down in with a torch. So that's them all cut out, ready to cut the prep on. That's me, I'm done for the week. I'm going home to chill out all weekend, try and recover. So see you Monday morning bright and fresh. I'll finish this bloody thing off. Somebody invent a cordless welder, that would be great, thanks. So anyway, got these all prepped up, ready for flush fitting. I'd imagine I'll still have to cut, cut some perimeter to get them to fit in the holes. But first things first is to tack on a lifting eye onto each of them. Because they're going flush into a hole, I have no means of getting my hands around the edges to hold them, so we'll tack them up and lower them down in with the crane. Got it, so I set the camera up, get the get these being fitted. Would have been a cool time lapse, a lot of crane work, just setting each individual one in. Each one had to be taken out maybe a couple of times and re-trimmed for a snug fit and a lot of hammering and beating and a couple of stuck ones that, <laughs> that jumped out and things would have been good on camera unfortunately didn't get it apologies for that but um, yeah that's them um, all fitted nice and flush ready for a big welding cruise the whole way to the finish line.
rolls of wire by the dozen. This is this is normal occurrence. Um, the little feed rollers. This little roller runs on a brass bush, or in this case, it used to. Um, whenever you put a new one on, put a little bit of grease or oil or lubrication, but it eventually it wears out. Partly what contributes it to it is your spring tension to clamp the rollers again together. Ideally you want to have the spring tension set as low as possible to have a minimum load on these little axles. But of course you have to balance that with, hit with the traction, the gripping ability to actually feed the wire. So you want the minimum amount of spring load to feed your wire. The less you can run, the longer these little axles wear. So we'll screw this out and have a look. You can see all the filings lying below. And there you go. It's completely goosed. We'll get the pliers and pull that out of there. See if we can track down a new one. The roller fits over the the gear. These little replaceable axle pins also wear. That one's not too bad. However, this little brass bush is completely done. So get a new one of those. You can buy little brass bush replacements to refurbish those. I'll go and get a new one. I noticed this was going because my wire stopped feeding smoothly. Um, this seems to be the cause. So I've come to raid my MIG cupboard. And find an old axle. You can see the wear on it. I have some new replacement axles in there along with different wire roller sizes. The only problem is all my other rollers are goosed as well so I'll send them all the way together to get little bushes replaced see if we can purchase some new ones. So there we go, we've got a good replacement out of the store smear some lube on it. There we go, that's it on the wire now. Two wire sizes in each roller. Make sure I get the right wire size on. There we go. that we're back in action. Brilliant.
Time to get it out of the corner. Hey guys, so just wanted to jump in at this stage and uh, thanks for hanging in this far. That marks the end of the welding. Yes, I never thought I'd get there myself. Um, so yeah, thanks for sticking it this far. Uh, hang around, don't go yet. We have a lot of great footage of the machining work taking place to fit the large sleeves to the bearing housings and then the reassembly and then we've got some smashing footage of it at work in its quarry uh, back crushing rock so yeah if you enjoyed the video so far i appreciate the thumbs up and uh, as usual be sure to check out my playlists i've got a lot more of this work um, and if you'd like to see more i'd be delighted if you'd click that subscribe button uh, only about 10% of my viewers are subscribers, so if you're new to my channel, welcome aboard. Glad to have you. So yeah, sit back and enjoy. Lots more still to come. And there's the colossal quantity of slag and metal, grinding dust, burning slag, and off cuttings that have came out of that job. Absolutely frightening. So much pain on the floor. <laughs> lots and lots of pain and sweat. Man, what a feeling. What a feeling to have conquered that after having a lot of doubt and stress at the start. The relief I'm feeling right now is pretty huge. And there we have it. A few more battle scars on the old floor. Damn that floor, seen some crushers. So yeah, we'll take a look at some of the materials used for a laugh. Surprisingly, we only have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 rolls of wire, one on the machine. 11 rolls of 1.2 wire burned. We have 5 bottles of oxygen, because the first cap was off obviously, so 5 bottles of oxygen. Mainly for preheat and then some cutting. We have 2 bo large bottles of propane used in the preheating, two of those used an awful lot of 9 inch grinding discs and also wire wheels, countless mask lenses, probably one lens every second day, third day, lots and lots of those, and the worst of all as I said, grinding discs, so if you Burnt at least 20 grind discs on this job. Been a few coffees drank and uh, a pint of water bottles after. Another thing I collected this time just for giggles was the snot rings that have came off the welder. 
So these are the snap that build up on the shroud of the welder. Um, I've probably got three quarters of them, the rest broke up. But that's how many snot rings it takes to weld a large swing jaw back together. I have three tips, a couple of which I reckon I can save. Um, very usable. And we have five bottles of Argus Shield Heavy. The ratios are different this time because the job was very, very preheat intensive. Um, it was welded at lower power as well, which means you'll be looking at less wire per, per bottle of gas, so that's why the gas to wire ratio is slightly different as well. Water bottles drank, there's nowhere near them all here. So there we have it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 50, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 25 large bottles of water, I'm sure there was 30 or more drank in the, in the welding of this flipping jaw and all the preheating and all the grinding and all the gouging. So there you have it folks, that's what it takes to weld a 10 ton swing jaw back together again. Incredible. What do we have here? Lots and lots of cables. I wonder what is at the other end. What? We um, put a few extra jacks in the middle underneath in case the whole thing sagged. Being at maximum temperature it possibly lose some of its structural rigidity because essentially if you turn the lights out in the middle of that thing it'll be red hot maybe even yellow hot incredible so it cools down tonight controlled by these machines plotted charted then tomorrow all of the wires and cables and ceramic plates will be stripped off. And from there, it goes to the machine shop. So here we have it, folks. She's on the cool down. Let's just see what temperature. It's incredible. Incredible. Right down the tail end there at 80 degrees. Let's see what it's like stab side an oven here. 235 degrees right in the middle there. Incredible. Love to know the total kilowatts it took to get 10 tons of steel up to over 200 degrees. Obviously the core reaching much higher temperatures. I'll have to ask the guys what temperature it goes to and for how long. You can see it plotting the cool down charts there. 470, 480, 500, 530. Well, let's see how warm she is full day after being turned off. I'll just put a bit of spit in the finger. I don't know if you can hear the sizzle, but she's still sizzling. So pretty cool, just got the uh, report from um, the heat treatment guys and um, Calibration certificate showing the calibration has been performed for the, the heat treating uh, measuring equipment. So um, we've got the actual temperature graph from the point that it was switched on. We can see that by 8 a.m., we were at 170 degrees. This climbs and climbs and climbs until it reaches its peak. 
shortly after 12 midday to approximately 12.30 we'll call it it was just about 590 five, about 590 degrees and that was held from we'll call it 12 o'clock until just before 4 o'clock so held at nearly 600 degrees for 4 or 5 hours and then from 600 degrees you have the gradual decline from 4 o'clock until after 10 p.m. 11 onwards 10 p.m. in the evening it was still at 360 degrees so the most important being, bit being the peak temperature that it was held at and the duration so approximately 600 degrees for as I say from approximately 12, 12.15 until uh, 3, about 3.30 so three and a half hours, give or take, 600 degrees. So yeah, very interesting. Another very interesting thing to note is the curve up to temperature. One, two, three, four, five, five hours. And the whole thing was not sitting at 600 degrees it was just the weld area and then the heat obviously graduates out into the the non the rest of the casting um, it's incredible to think one two three four approximately five hours to get that entire weld area up to 600 degrees um, you can make a, a calculation if you're good at maths, an electrician or whatever. The power units from what I could observe were 50 kVA each. I think there was three in use. Possibly two. So call that, say call it 150 kVA. It's taken 150 kVA of power, nearly five hours. To bring that up to 600 degrees now that's obviously gradually brought on and it's not turned up full power off the bat because you want to bring it up over a gradual period of time to allow the hook to soak e the heat sorry to allow the heat to soak evenly throughout the entire structure i'm assuming these little numbers are where each of the thermostats for each of the pads have clicked on and off it's noting these all controlled very very interesting love to know more about this sort of work heavy shackles and chains <coughs> pardon me right get around to the other workshop so that's the moved over to the other side
huge borer. Certainly one of the biggest in the UK. As I said, from the home of the Titanic. If you're watching this video, the the accident has just happened. The loss of the Titan sub at the Titanic wreck site. And this large borer came from the engine works from where the Titanic's engines were made in Belfast. Harlan and Wolf. A lot of history to ourselves personally tied to Harlan and Wolf shipyard over the years. Been a great customer, continue to be so to this day. And I was able to do a great deal of exploring as a child of the engine works of the shipyard. Uh, I hope to put a video up of some old VHS from within the engine works where the Titanic ship engines were made. What diameter is the bearing? Uh, 600. 600. Sort of cut you take in there? That's two mil aside there. Okay. There's wheat dyes and stuff in it. Alright, oh, right. right. So, don't come out there. Okay. I can't get the rest of them out. I'm scared I am. I simply cut the uh, sleeve material from large diameter pipe that we have in stock carry a large range of pipes and all sizes to cover most of these situations so it's a nice big lump of pipe that'll make one of the bearing sleeves up to our vertical borer shop see how the bearing sleeves are coming on the two of them are progressing side by side We'll get some shots of those being frozen in a cask of liquid nitrogen being fitted into the machine.
bring that up, put it in a camper on it. Yeah. Uh, right out the bushing, buddy. Yeah. Still slag as fuck. So that's the bores. I've both been machined to the finished size. Fortunately, I wasn't here to capture that. You see, I've got a lovely, lovely finish on them. So, virtually as new spec for the bearings to be fitted to after all the welding and stress relieving. So the next stage will be out of here, back into the fitting shop to be reassembled. So next stage is a new backing plate to be set onto the surface. It's just like a little intermediate washer, sacrificial wear plate. So plasma guy's been down and measured it all out. He's currently cutting that now. Some of the other work taking place to this crusher is the, the main shaft will be getting dressed on the lathe, checked, a bit of a clean up. A two very large double taper roller bearings on our big craven lathe if you want to see more videos of this girl check out some of my past uploads and as always subscribe you never know what will be coming up if you're a big lathe machine tool fan thumbs up that's how I know what to bring you guys So yeah, that's been getting cleaned up, made, refinished, hopefully as good as new. So there we have it. Shafts had a, just a light clean, bit of an emery by the look of things and check of sizes. The problem with these shafts is they can be quite near their limit, particularly if they're old. Um, if you reduce the diameter, then you're you're risking a reduction of strength enough to cause them to break. So I'm assuming the guys have checked checked the diameters. <coughs> you can see with the sleeve. It's been on and chewed it up a little bit. They'll check it with the micrometer that's within spec. And obviously depend on customer what they want to do in their budget and how much they want to spend on it. Uh, we're obviously bound by what we can do within those constraints too. So that's it. Uh, out of the lathe, cleaned up and checked and uh, ready to put back in the jaw whenever the jaw is re-sleeved. So we'll keep an eye and see how the jaw is coming along. There's the main body, I'm sorry, yes the main body housings are also being re-sleeved. That's a new sleeve to be installed in those.
very heavy bits of kit. So, as you can see, the side plate has been machined. This was due to a very unexpected reason that I'll go into in a bit. Uh, they say every day is a school day, and I found that out. Um, had the machine a little bit off both sides for clearance to make sure it fits where it's going. Uh, now we're ready to put the shaft back in the jaw. I just dip in and out of this job as it's being put together, stage by stage. Bam, there we have it. The shaft's in. Our Sammy doesn't muck about. So, absolutely incredible phenomenon with these side plates. As you can see, they've been machined. So, I calculated those side plates to give 5mm clearance per side. And seam, seam welded them around the complete perimeter. And what I did not foresee or allow for was the absolute minuscule air gap that was behind that plate to expand enough at 600 degrees to bulge all of those areas out like a balloon. If you imagine like blowing glass so so yeah the entire perimeter is welded and then a few of these plug welds and behind this behind that behind that behind every little area you have you know half a mil of an air gap because that casting is not perfectly flat so whenever you set something flat on it's going to have little pockets of air I never in my wildest dreams expected those little pockets of air with a, a, you know an extremely low volume extremely low volume never expected them to expand enough to belly to balloon those side plates out uh, and, and they did um, so the learning curve there is leave a little hole for the air to escape um, incredible incredible things you learn every day is a school day so as a result of that expand we had to essentially machine the bulges and the bubbles off it it has left that material a little bit thinner than we would have liked but you're only talking maybe five mil aside but that that was the clearance that i had allowed for this to fit into the machine so we had to get that five mil aside back so yes yeah, so that's it machined on the the big uh, cwb horizontal boring machine milling machine uh, shaft fitted um, the main bearing housings are being sleeved at the moment and they'll be refitted and the new wear part bolted on and at that stage I'll probably be ready to leave her property. Um, I'm hoping to visit the quarry. I would like to see it on the crane being installed but that will depend on the quarry and how busy they are etc. Um, but I would certainly like to call and get some footage of it uh, crushing rock fully assembled and back to work so so we'll see what happens stay tuned see what uh, I'll try and keep as interesting as I can. I'd like, like to follow these jobs from start to finish if I possibly can. You have a lot of different aspects between welding and fitting and machining and, and uh, quarry work. Um, so yeah, I'd like to have as much variety as possible for you guys. As I know some of you guys are welders, some of you are quarry fitters, miners, earth movers, digger men, tractor men. I always like to keep a bit of variety for you. So yeah, stay tuned. So here we are, the bearings getting measured. Four, four sides and three places. Four being fitted to the housing. And then the housing will be mounted to the swing jaw. 
And then after that the flywheels. Some lovely big new bolts for the wear parts, really look at things. It's all heavy stuff, there's nothing small or light in this game. Been away for a couple of days and I come back to a nice surprise of a finished jaw. It appears to be complete and a waiting collection on the low loader. So folks, that's what it should look like. I'll just do a flashback to how it arrived to me. Ready for the splash? Unbelievable. Such a great feeling to be standing here finished. Earlier on being presented this in two pieces, you get that feeling of you get that feeling of uh, being daunted, to say the least. But here we are, done another one. The next one shouldn't be so daunting. <laughs> get better at these as we go, I hope. Just a few more shots and uh, that's the end of the project. So if, uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, I'd be very, very grateful for a thumbs up or a like. And if you'd like to see more of it, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell if you want notified. Supports greatly, appreciate it as always. Big jaw crusher, big cone crusher. All heavy stuff, all big shafts. Try and get some more machining content for the machinists. We've been making large shafts like that. So anyway, drop me a comment down below what your main interests are. Machining, welding, off-roading, tractors, engines, engineering, whatever. Let me know, it's always interesting to hear. Um, it's hard to cater for all interests. Sometimes I think it's interesting, isn't it interesting to other people, but anyway guys, catch you when the low loader arrives.
clear. Loving life, living life. Unbelievable, boy. Boy, some operator. So there we have it, folks. Mission accomplished. Thanks to everybody that joined me on this three-part, three-hour epic journey. Three hours. In reality, it was about three months. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. We done it. We done it. I won. I beat it. <laughs> well, still going anyway, so that's the main thing. So, yeah. Massive thanks to everybody that uh, tuned in to the video. The response has been fantastic. I'm loving the comments. Um, most enjoyable part for me on YouTube at the moment is the comments. Um, it's great to hear everybody's stories and opinions and uh, interaction has been fantastic. So thanks for that. Um, I don't know what will be next on my channel. Probably won't be welding for a while, but um, lots and lots and lots of stuff sitting on hard drive, so I'll have to get it uploaded. Uh, some old VHS tapes converted. Um, and a lot more tractor footage to come. Uh, there will be lots more engineering stuff. But if you're gasping at the moment, check out the playlist. As I said, loads of engineering videos on my playlist. So have a good nosy and a poke around my channel. And uh, there was something there for everybody to enjoy. So, yeah. I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for tuning in.